Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at membrane simulations in Grasshopper again. And with that it's interesting that we have basically this flat shape and then we have points that we can move around depending on our needs and we can basically um, drag this membrane shape around. Um, for that it's really interesting because it helps us to get exactly the things that we want to do. And for example if we want to um, change those points around and change uh, their position like totally we can obviously do so in a rather easy manner so um, if you would like to see how this works and how we can manage and bend the ways of using grasshopper and kangaroo then follow this video basically so we will start with a new file from scratch um, first thing we're going to do is we create a plane uh, this plane will be a mesh plane uh, under it will be under mesh uh, primitive and then mesh plane and we will select like, the boundary which will be a rectangle it can either be made through this or we just create it like purely in grasshopper so we will create this plane here um, give it a certain size and then we will put it in the boundary um, as you see right now, it's like it it makes this weird like noise, but that's only because I have like a plane like here. I can just like hide it, and now it will actually look normal. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to um, uh, import the kangaroo plugin like on the kangaroo. So we like the, we use the balancing server as the main thing, and then we also add a button to it, so it will be resetting in times of need and then we also use a toggle um, just in case we want to stop the iterations then we have to define um, the points that we put here and we also need to define um, a certain uh, basic strength of the grid itself so <clears throat> and we can do this with the goal mesh in kangaroo and use the vertex loads and uh, we're gonna assign it a certain uh, number from um, zero or minus one to one and this will be applied to the mesh and then this will be uh, used here as you see it's just moving up very quickly so we just want to reduce it and maybe do it negative so it moves down really quickly however the problem right now is there's like no anchor point so we need to def define um, those as well uh, plus we need to define um, a certain strength to the things as well so what I would like to do now is to define the strength of the um, of the grid itself so we're using this under the goal lines and then we use the line length tool and by that we have to uh, get basically the lines of the mesh which we can get through um, a mesh again analysis and then mesh edges and those mes mesh edges will be the interior edges and we also need the uh, length of um, those um, edges in there as well and once we have those we will just put them with the shift click and goals as well and as you see it's more well it's still falling down but at least it has its uh, current size and the, the thing tries to maneuver in a certain way next thing we have to do is basically we have to de define a certain um, edge around it in general that we're gonna use also the uh, um, exterior edges and we can just anchor them to those points and we can just use it by using endpoints and we get the endpoints of them and those things are always here and there but sometimes they duplicate so we can use under kangaroo utility we can actually remove those duplicate points rather easily and now we just have them once so here see we have 40 points and here just like 39 so um i guess it was just one point it was duplicated i guess yeah it, it doesn't really matter actually anyway but that's fine just in case um the next thing we have to do is to use an anchor point and um just leave the target clear and the strength clear as well as like it's normal things and now you already see we have like a basic um grid that like works works for yourself and you can work around with now what we want to do is we want to add certain points that are basically defining um or like use those points that are here and basically 
choose the next points to it and then those points will basically try to get as closely as this point as possible. So we have to create some kind of amount of points first. Right click, set multiple points. Set those points you want to have first. Then maybe change the uh, where we want to have them. Obviously we can put any kind of points we want in there. I mean, it doesn't need to be like from that. So like this. And now we have our, our points. And now we need to basically see what the closest points of those things are. So we can do this by, um, it's under, I was going to rest, but like if you just type the point closest, closest, uh, probably correctly, should be useful, closest points. So the point cloud that we have are basically the points that we want here. We can get the actual dose by explode mesh. No, it, we will get those by analysis deconstruct mesh and those will be the vertices of it basically those points here I just remove those points here and now we need to find the closest points of that so that's with our point cloud and this will be our points and as you see it gives us um, a few number of closest points and depending on how strong we want to have it we can um, change this one here as well so um, the next thing, basically we have the um, under kangaroo we need to use. We have basically our anchor points. Those will be uh, those points here. And then we need to also target points, basically the points that we had there. And we can now put them in here as well. And as you see, it kind of makes us a very weird result. That's because we didn't graph this tree, basically it goes through every point. So we need to graph the target points in order for it to work correctly. And um, okay, so now we basically have our basic grid shape already. Which I wanna maybe make this a little bit more detailed um, with increasing the uh, amount of things here. And uh, right now we just see like a lot of points. So we might need to use the show commands, which is under main and then just the uh, yeah, show. And we use the mesh that we have in the beginning and we just shift click it as well into it. So um, that's basically how we have it here for the moment. And now you can basically drag around those points as you want. And you can obviously make them stronger or make the gravity less strong to it. So here you always have like a more like uniform shape and Okay, something is actually happening here in the end. Let me actually take a look at this. Ah, okay. So there's basically like one point that is not connected to it correctly. Maybe we can actually just... <laughs> that doesn't work. So it looks like as if there is a few amount of points that are basically don't give a shit about gravity at all. That's interesting. Um, so we basically we have our closest points that are defined here. We have beginning and end points and it happens so some for some reason there's something it doesn't display it correctly here. So there's this space. Ah, okay. So this endpoint doesn't get used here because we only use the starting points. So the best way is actually we could merge um, the start and endpoints together. And then we will just remove the points that we have here, or like for example, the we have doubled. And then we put it in here as well and that will fix that because right now the points are actually like uh, it will actually be used the point that is being used okay nice um okay and now basically to to make it look a little more prettier we can use the custom preview use a certain color uh, the color picker da, 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 here go for grasshopper green and then we can use it 
as the material here. I can put in my infinite plane again, go back to rendered view, and maybe hide some of this other stuff here. Um, maybe actually make some of the stuff actually visible a little bit. Uh, so we have some kind of reference point, at least like a, a little bit, or we can maybe even get the mesh edges here and give it also kind of like a, don't worry with it, it's like red, it doesn't really, it, because it gets some lines at all but as well, and it doesn't kind of process those, so this is actually fine. Um, put this in the material in here. And we can maybe make the color a little different. <laughs> Doesn't want to work where I want it to. Can okay, this list item? I nails. Um. Okay, doesn't want to give me those things, but I guess you can always just get like by by uh, using just that. So yeah, <clears throat> I think that's pretty useful. And for example, if you want to like change um, the design or change the way of things look, instead of modeling everything all over again, I think that's like a pretty kind of solid way to create like a, a mesh tent almost um, in your design and it is very kind of like smooth of how, how you can do it so yeah i think it's quite useful to to if you want to create certain like organic shapes and have them more easily like available in your design i think that's a great way to at least start with it and to get like a certain hang of how how like a membrane could work on your design uh, as well so yeah and I think now it could be kind of interesting for example if for example we have those uh, points here and maybe we can move them up so those are like basically the points that go all around and now we can experiment like a little bit with it and like move them up into the z direction like that use this as geometry and if you just reset this quickly, okay, that looks like a total chaos basically. Um, let me actually see why. So we have the geom geometry that's moved upwards. Ah, okay. So, ah, okay, the target geometry was basically not correct here. Okay. So now it would have like more like a floating kind of thing to it. This is interesting as well. I think if you want to have like a more like uplifted thing as well to it. If you would have some kind of um, shape around it that basically moves along it. I think it always also works pretty well. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope this will help your design process and cool make a lot of things more clear and um, less kind of workable because uh, not no, more workable but that you have to less work less for because that seems to be a very tedious process to do this every time by hand yourself and um, this looks, looks a little bit more natural as if you would kind of pick those points as well ah yeah and maybe we can actually make a very simple if you just project those points um, to the ground and uh, basically they're like now there as well and we can use a line tool and we add those lines basically together well it doesn't really work on those points i guess too well but um maybe that's that's time for like that another video then um but if you have those points here and you just make like a small pipe around it and make the radius a little bit smaller. Um, yeah.
And you also have a usable kind of piece that holds holds those things up as well. So um, yeah, hopefully this helped in your design process and uh, good luck with everything.